Thank you, Steph, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we have four notes for you, and uh, we will be done. Uh, the President of the General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Dennis Francis, will undertake an official visit to the State of Qatar from the 9th to the 11th of December. The PJ will take part in the Doha Forum 2023 under the theme Building Shared Futures. President Francis will hold separate bilateral meetings with His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Emir of the State of Qatar. The PJ will also be received by His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman bin Jassim Al Thani, the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Qatar. On Sunday, President Francis will deliver a statement at the opening panel with the Prime Minister of Qatar and heads of state and government. Navigating a new era, revitalizing multilateralism for global changes will be the theme of a lecture by the PGA to students at Qatar University. Whilst in Doha, Mr. Francis will visit the UN House before he returns to New York on Monday morning. The PGA will depart from New York on Friday, which is tomorrow. He is being accompanied by two political advisors as well as a communication advisor. And travel costs are being covered by the OPJ's regular budget and by the state of Qatar. And of course, you will get updates from us. President Francis is deeply concerned about the political situation in Guinea-Bissau and the latest wave of violence by national forces. Following the dissolution of the country's parliament and reports of threats and intimidation, the PJ is appealing for calm and the resumption of dialogue. Mr. Francis said that all parties have to restrain from the use of force and promote the constitutional order, peace and stability. And the PJ has presided this morning over the 45th plenary meeting on the reports of the Special Political and Decolonization Committee, Fourth Committee, and the Sixth Committee. The General Assembly took action on several items of the agenda, including assistance in mine action, effects of atomic radiation, economic and other activities which affect the interests of the peoples of the non-self-governing territories, revitalization of the work of the GA, among other draft resolutions, and more information on our website. And as we speak, the PGA is getting ready to take part in the event to celebrate World Soil Day, which is marked by the UN every 5th of December. President Francis will deliver opening remarks at the invitation of the permanent mission of Thailand to the UN. And this year, the theme is Soil and Water, a Source of Life, and aims, of course, to highlight the importance and the relationship between soil and water in achieving sustainable and resilient agri-food systems. Currently, 33% of soils are degra degraded, and the regenerations of eroded soil can be an arduous process requiring, requiring up to 1,000 years to produce a mere two to three centimeters of replenished earth. Uh, last but not least, this afternoon for your diaries, the General Assembly and the Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, will hold a joint thematic event on landlocked developing countries. And this meeting is convened, you may remember, by PJ Dennis Francis and the President of the ECOSOC, Her Excellency Ms. Paula Narbaez. Uh, this joint event is being held under the theme Road to Kigali, News Program of Action for Landlocked Developing Countries as an accelerator of the implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. And these discussions today will provide input to the third United Nations Conference on the Landlocked Developing Countries, which is scheduled for June 2024 in Rwanda. So we're talking about next year. And this is everything we have for today. So why, um, okay, Deji here, and then after Deji I go to the screen, and then I come back to Stefano. Deji, go ahead. How are you today? Hi, good. Monica, mm -hmm. uh, we saw the Israeli officials attacking the Secretary General, attacking ANWA, attacking UN women, Mr. Wenesland, Ms. Ling Hastings. Uh, how much does the... How much does President of the General Assembly worried about these attacks on the the, uh, the damage of reputation and functioning of the United Nations? Well, first of all, um, these are not news um, 
to the PJ. You will remember that uh, he uh, expressed um, his opinion um, about this uh, when it happened first uh, in several uh, interviews when he was asked. And uh, he talked at length about uh, the relationship that he has with the Secretary General. The Secretary General um, has been working very well with the PGA. Uh, they have a, an excellent relationship. Uh, they uh, talk about this issue and other relevant issues to the UN. And uh, this PGA, Deji, as you know, uh, he is a, a very seasoned diplomat. He firmly believes in, in dialogue, in reaching consensus uh, through conversation, through dialogue, not through uh, arguments and, um, and attacks. And uh, he uh, believes that we have to uh, remain uh, civil in our exchanges. So, Thank you. So, ha so has the PGA contact with the Israeli officials to, to convey this message, message not to have attacks but conversations? The PJ has had exchanges with uh, the Israeli uh, officials, but also uh, with officials, uh, or with representatives uh, from the Palestinians from the very beginning. And uh, he has been uh, looking uh, and uh, working uh, to serve as, as a bridge, as uh, a facilitator of dialogue, because only dialogue, only dialogue uh, will, in a political uh, uh, outcome, of course, decision, of course, uh, will uh, uh, help out in this uh, situation right now. Not more tension, of course. I go to the screen if somebody is on the screen because I don't want to, you know, I don't see any hands. So, Stefano, you have the mic. Go ahead. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. um, this, we find out that the Secretary General used a, a, a power, the Article 99 of the mm -hmm. Charter, to, uh, for the first time. Uh, is there anything that this, the president of the General Assembly um, in his last seven months, I mean, few months that he has left, there is any article out there in the charter that maybe he's thinking to use on those crises that there are at the moment at the UN? The President of the General Assembly is very focused on the work of the General Assembly. And the General Assembly has spoken, uh, as we say in English, loud and clear. There is a resolution uh, on this uh, particular issue uh, that needs to be implemented. Member states got together, decided, uh, spoke very clearly uh, on what they uh, consider uh, to be necessary to be uh, implemented right now. And uh, the president uh, remains and stands by that. There is a resolution that needs to be implemented. Yeah. Anything else? If not, I'll say thank you so much. I appreciate you staying. Ah, that's our last briefing for this week. I'll see you on Monday. Thanks.